Here we are into the back. I've got Nick Hammond. Nick, congratulations on the book. If Thank you, you haven't got the book, make sure you pick it up for Christmas this year. It is a fantastic read. How'd you come about it? Uh, what inspired you? Well, you've known me a few years, Rob, and uh, I've been in and around the cigar industry on and off, writing for Cigar Journal and various other magazines. I'm like you guys, cigar mad, always have been. And uh, But before I got into this, I was a reporter, newspaper and magazine reporter. So I've travelled around the world doing strange things. You know, I was in Bosnia during the, during the Bosnia War. And, you know, I used to do uh, food, food and travel and yeah. stuff. So I go to Japan to taste whiskey and things like this. And I love to smoke a cigar. You've done it tough. Uh, uh, it's been a, <laughs> that's why I look so good. <laughs> so people used to say to me, that's amazing, why don't you write your own book? No one's going to want to read this. And I thought, actually, it's quite interesting. And I started to write it for fun. Yeah. And it actually was fun, and it was, I thought it was quite good, and it was quite humorous and light-hearted, and I thought to myself, there's nothing like this. You know, cigar books are big, coffee table books, or they're very dark, they've got sizes, True. they've got bands, they've got histories, but there's nothing that's a bit of fun and has a cigar in it, hence, around the world. It is just uh, a really a great bunch of stories, um, which it, it makes you feel like you're there. And it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great read. It is a great read. Congratulations Thanks, for this. I oh, appreciate it. And um, if you get a chance, to, if you're at Dortmund's next year, you're yeah, here yeah. every year. I'm going to be around. Oh, ben, don't, can you, can you, they can still buy the book. It hasn't sold out at this point. In no, time. not yet. First print run is selling well, but it's still, still available. Still going there. So I'll put a link at the bottom of this. Get on there. You'll have it in time for Christmas. Let your family and friends know. It really is a great read. Around the world in 80 cigars by Nick Hammond. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Thank Cheers. You. Appreciate it. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Guys, some uh, great news. We've got uh, Reese oh, here. Yeah, FOH, Reese here, Reese to FOH. Um, we had his review of the um, Corona this morning, which he's smoking now. Both Justin Seltis and I smoked it this morning and thought it was, well, thought it was the best cigar of the show by an absolute country mile. Pleasure. Now, I probably absolutely screwed up what went into that cigar, but uh, since Reese is here, please, mate, let us know. What, tell us from, from wrapper to insides and outs. How you came up with the blend, what were you trying to achieve? Because what you've achieved is something quite special. You want me to start from the inside or you want me to start from the outside? You can start from the outside. <laughs> so the wrapper is an Ecuadorian Connecticut. The binder is a very delicious, sweet jalapa. I handpicked myself. All the tobacco I do and source myself. The fillers are of Condega, Isteli, and the Lajero is a Pennsylvania broadleaf, which is supposed to be a very strong Lajero, but I developed it to where it kind of combines the sweetness of the jalapa and muddles it just a little bit, but you still get a nice powerful. I, I got it, I got it as, I called it as medium full this morning. I was questioning whether it had any Lajero. I didn't think it probably did, but you say it does, but yeah. you actually balance that out. Yes. Yeah. because. When you get to sub, my experience, when you get to sub 42, 44 gauge cigars, working with Lijero is a, bit, a little bit problematic. It's very tricky. It very, is very, very, very tricky, tricky what you're trying to achieve. It's like when you're trying to fine tune a small dish, a very elegant dish, and you add a little too much of the powerful spice. Oh. That's what broadleaf Lijero would do. But if you just incorporate it with other tobaccos that complement each other and bring out depth of each other, instead of just focusing on, hey, I'm just using a very strong one. Okay, it's good. I love the draw on the cigar, and now we've had four or five uh, different guys try them. They've got a pull on the draw. Um, it's, it's, it's Cuban-esque in its draw. Is that something you specifically want? Yes. All my cigars have been. Most Nicaraguans, non-Cuban, have a misconception. You know, they're all open draw, very like open. I like that little resistance in all my cigars. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm just getting you know, a blast of smoke. You know, I just work with it, so you slowly release the tobacco. It rolls off your tongue. It, that for us this morning went for an hour and fifteen minutes, yeah. which and, but it never went out once. It's it's a nice balance yeah. that you've achieved there. I, I, what, what's your really what's your 
I suppose um, belief system in what you're trying to achieve with your cigars. What, I mean, you've been in the business how long now? Maybe five years in November. Five years in November. You've, you've, you've had some sensational success. You're creating some good product, but everything comes from a belief system. What is your belief system with cigars? I truly believe in, like, just in Connecticut, uh, most people believe in Connecticut should be this. I always look, I step outside the box and I look at it from a perspective for me. I don't like Connecticut. So when I just happened to put the Connecticut wrapper on the cigar, it was. It was perfect. I truly, I step outside the box. I deconstruct and reblend from the inside out. A lot of people just go from the outside in. They already know what wrapper they want to do. Yeah. I truly don't know what wrapper I'm using on that cigar until I get to that phase. So, so when you blend the cigar, when you start the, the beginning the blending process, you're separate, you're separating out each of the different types of leaves, yeah, from uh, from your from your secos to your relados, and, and you're smoking those individually. Individually, all the way through, yep. and even when I have the structure, the filler of the cigar, I will go back and then take the exact same leaves and position them differently to see how if uh, the viso is a little bit better sitting next to the seco or the lajero, you know, all lajero should be perfectly down the seco. Yeah. But I try to different intubados, uh, sandwich press cigars, so I'll take the same blend and do four different kinds of uh, rolling techniques. And then I'll go from there and then go for binder. So it's a long process, but at every blend I do, I put all the tobacco on the table. I have little pedicles rolled up, smoke them, and they look like little joints. But it is so good to see that you don't do the normal cookie cutter no, way of I don't making make, cigars. I don't yeah? make a phone call and say, hey, give me one no, for sure. no, no, no. How important to you, we had a quick quick discussion before, but how important to you is is binder in the cigar? Because it's something we don't really talk about in, in, in terms binder, of... Binder, binder's a very big factor for percentage of the cigar in my opinion. Yeah. It's because the binder's usually a thicker leaf. So the surface to master area with a thin wrapper and you have a really thick binder. You know, it's just like eating your sashimi a steak. Yeah. Nice thin cut steak. You, get, you still get the flavor, but when you add just a couple centimeters more, yeah. you really get the depth of it. So I truly believe a binder is a bigger factor in the flavor of the cigar. Yeah. But it's good it's good working and good talking with an expert um, and someone who's doing some I'm really special no, but you're a passionista yeah. which is even better than yes, an expert uh, yes. it's good spending time with a passionista in this world of cigars um, and i know the guys in FOH really appreciate that as well keep doing what you're doing mate and it's an absolute pleasure spending time with yeah, yourself thank you thank take care thank you. FOH catch you again soon see you soon FOH